Hi everyone and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today we'll create a 6x6 mixed media project and uh, inspiration comes from this die set. It is called Funky Toadstools and it is designed by Tim Holtz for CSX. I absolutely love his style, so at the moment I saw this die I knew I had to work with it. Now, uh, the fun part about this, which is very convenient, is that all the parts for each toadstool is in one die. And this last die cuts out four bases for your toadstools, which I'm not going to use for today's project. For my background I will work with oxide sprays and I like to work with oxides for my backgrounds because they turn out quite dull so they don't steal the thunder of the focal points. Now I am going with uh, shabby shutters, tumbled glass and uh, cracked pistachio. I'm working on thick watercolor paper and this is 6x6 in size which I am planning to frame later on for my wall. But if you want to recreate this project, of course, you can work on just a page of your Dix Bound Journal. You can work on a panel or even on a canvas. I usually spray water on my paper when I'm working with sprays. However, I didn't do that today. After all, these are quite um, light colors and I didn't want to lighten them up even more. Now, I did help the colors to blend with each other just a little bit by tilting the paper. And I'm using my heat gun to make sure that everything is dry. And now on to some of my favorite techniques for adding visual texture. I'm working with a baby wipe over a stencil. This is one of my most used stencils with all those bubbles. I'm just lifting a little bit of color from the background. And you can have a similar result if you spray water over the stencil. However, with a baby wipe, I do have more control of the areas that I want to have that design. I'm using my heat tool to speed up the drying process. I can never wait for things to dry naturally. And then I'm going for another go-to technique where I will do some stamping. I have a bunch of stamps here from uh, oldest uh, collections that uh, I keep on using again and again on my uh, backgrounds, mainly stamps that have text on top. I find these are really versatile and can be used on pretty much everything. And although I normally go with a tone on tone stamping, where I am going with an ink that is uh, slightly darker than the background, this time I decided to go with black just to have more definition. The more you create projects, the more you will find that uh, you tend to work with certain techniques again and again that they make you happy and uh, they turn into results that are pleasing to your eyes. And the more you create, you will find out that uh, you tend to repeat techniques again and again or to combine different techniques that just because you like the look or uh, they make you happy. And that's when you find your very own style. So here is a technique that I tend to do again and again on my projects lately. I love to have uh, darker edges on my projects. I find that um, they frame them somehow. And uh, stamping with text all around to create kind of a black frame is a technique that I love to repeat again and again. Now, another thing that I absolutely love is using vintage photo. I cannot stay away from this color. I find that it helps when I have that on the edges to draw the eye more to the center and it helps the brighter colors to pop even more. Now, I'm going to finish it off by inking up only the very edge with black ink. This is thick watercolor paper, so you can still see the white edge and that's exactly what I'm trying to cover up. And finally, my favorite white splashes. I am doing my splashes lately with this bottle just because I find it very convenient. This is a paint spray, white paint spray by Altenew. But you can use your um, gesso if you water it down with water or even white paint. Now I'm going to create my own colored paper so that I can do the die cutting. And I need a red one for the mushrooms. I could go ahead and use my sprays on top of my paper. I'm working with watercolor paper here. I'm showing you here, however, that if you don't have the sprays, you can definitely go with the stress inks if you have those. Just use the infamous smooshing technique. And you could definitely do that for your background as well. 
I'm going to dry this first layer and repeat the same process. This way I will end up having a more uh, vibrant look. The benefit of this uh, technique is that you don't end up with a completely smooth or flat color. And uh, this way you create a panel where you can die cut different pieces that they are not all going to look the same. They will have some variation, which is going to look at the end as an interesting texture with uh, highlights and shadows. For the red part of my mushrooms, I combined barn door and fired brick. And for this panel, I combined spiced marmalade, wild honey, and I sprayed just a touch of vintage photo to add a little bit more texture. And this is what I'm going to use to cut out the bottom of my mushrooms. And it's time to do the die cutting. It's really convenient that you get all the pieces for one mushroom in one die. So all I did was to choose the three mushrooms that I wanted to work with, run them through with that red panel, and then one more time with that orange one. Of course, you can use colored cardstock to do that step, or you can even cut them out from white cardstock and then just color it in with your favorite mediums. Now for each of those mushrooms there are parts that you need to layer one on top of the other and for those I'm just going to use my finger dabbers and ink up some parts to make them look darker. I'm not introducing any new colors, this is the darkest color of the two that I used for the base when I did that smooshing technique. I also used vintage photo on some of those pieces to introduce some shadows and then it's not difficult to put those mushrooms together there are only a few pieces for each one of them all you do is to just layer one on top of the other and you can follow the layout on the packaging I am using my liquid glue here I normally go with um, Novo Deluxe glue but I'm uh, out of it and the delivery is uh, so slow that uh, they haven't arrived yet so I ran out of Nouveau Deluxe glue, if you can believe that. But in any case, that gave me the opportunity to try out the Tacky Glue by Simon's Stamp. I had that in my stash for a long time and I find that it works just fine. Anyway, I put together my toad tools and now it's time to put everything together on my project. I'm going to lay them on top and try to decide how I want them to look. And this is where I wanted to create a ground and my go-to technique for creating ground is to use corrugated cardstock. Now I have this piece which is one of the textures by Tim Holtz but you can definitely work with a scrap piece of paper from a box. So this one is self-adhesive but I'm not always uh, very sure that this is going to hold nicely that's why I added a little bit of my white glue. I'm going to cut off the excess and now I have a ground for all my toadstools to stand on top. I love the funky look of those toadstools. They can be used to create a fairy garden. You can even use them depending on the colors that you decide to work with as trees. I decided to go with uh, a monochromatic look on these uh, mushrooms. For all of them I went with red. And I'm going to stick two of them close to each other. I like them to touch so that they look as if they are part of the same composition. And for the other one, I'll go all the way to the other side just to add something interesting and a touch of red color on the other side. Now I'm going to bring out my paper dolls and I got the inspiration from Tim's latest uh, YouTube video where he was introducing the latest collection for ideology and he came up with new paper dolls and that reminded me that I haven't used the bunch of paper dolls that I still have on my stash. I always tend to use the paper dolls that they look as if they are doing something. So here I'm using the little guy who is uh, sitting and I put him on top of the mushroom. I'm also going to use the other guy who looks as if he is uh, leaning on top of something and I'm going to place him leaning on top of the mushroom. Here is where I needed a base, that's why I'm going with that wooden um, ruler and uh, this is also from a very old ideology collection. And I like that these boys interact with the elements that I have already on my page. This way they become a part of the image, a part of the story. And I absolutely love the look. You can tint them if you like. I decided to leave them black and white. I think they add so much as they are. I'm also going to give them a pet. So I'm just going to audition the pet, try to decide where I want him to be. And I decided to stick him just next to the second boy. So I'm going to first do some dry brushing. This is going to help the texture pop even more and then I can stick the dog down. 
I like to use the paper dolls in unexpected ways, so here you see I have completely different proportion and they look as if they are super tiny and the idea came from a quote that I decided to work with today that says it's the little things in life. That's why my two boys are tiny, smaller than the mushrooms. The wooden ruler at the bottom also adds to the whole idea since uh, it is a way to measure things and there are many ways to add a quote on your page. You can write it down with your handwriting if you want to. You can combine stickers with stamped words just like I did today. You can even use your printer or your label maker to print out uh, your quotes, which is another technique that I tend to do a lot. Just whatever works every time. Here I just used words from a sticker booklet by Tim Holtz. On my quotes, I tend to emphasize on a word by having it larger, the word that um, sums up the meaning of the quote. And in this case, I love the fact that the word little is the larger one, which is oxymoron. Also notice that I do add white glue at the back of the stickers just to make sure that they are going to stay put. Now I'm back to my spraying box and uh, here I'm using uh, Rustic Wilderness. I just want to have um, a paper, a panel that is green so that I can cut out a couple of leaves to add them on my composition to make it look fuller. So these are the funky toadstools and I find that they go perfectly together with the funky flowers. I will use just one of the leaves which is quite big so that I can cut out a few. And if you combine flowers and leaves from this set with the mushrooms that I'm using today, I think you can create a lovely project that would look like a secret garden or a fairy garden, which is on my to-do list for another project. Here I'm just using a piece of uh, cardboard from a box that I cut out. I just want to have some dimension there, a dimensional element, so that I can uh, go up to the level of the ruler, of the wooden ruler. This way I can stick on top a piece of washi tape. And then on top I am going to add the leaves as well. Notice that I went with leaves that are actually about the size of the boys just so that I can continue that uh, theme all over the project. I'm also going to stick there a sticker that says stay simple, which uh, kind of completes the whole quote for today. And now let's do some um, highlighting and some finishing touches before we call this project done. This is another one of my go-to techniques. I like to add some highlights here and there on the die cut elements. I'm also going to add some highlights on the words as well as on the stickers. The green leaves as well as the ruler were looking too plain to me, so I'm going to add some white splashes. This is going to kind of bring all the elements together since they will have the same details on top. But I don't want to have any white splashes on top of the boys. That's why I'm protecting everything with a baby wipe there. Finally, as I was looking at my project, I decided that uh, the second boy and the dog needed something extra to help them pop. That's why I'm adding a very thin strip of black cardstock underneath their legs. It's a tiny detail, but I think it makes a difference since it helps them pop even more. And that was the mixed media project for today. I hope that you had fun and that you got inspired. Here are some close-up photos where you can see all the details better. Just like always, you will find the full list of all the products that I used down below in the description area. Don't forget to like and subscribe and keep in mind that I don't only post mixed media projects on Tuesdays. Sometimes I do post mixed media projects on other days of the week as well, which is the case with my steampunk cowl that I'm going to link on this video at the end. If you missed that video last week, make sure to check it out where I am mainly focusing on dry brushing. A big thank you to all of you for visiting today and watching. I hope that you had fun and that you got inspired and I'll see you all next time.